independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 730,000 laid off Americans filed new claims for jobless benefits last week. That's better than it has been, but still higher than anything seen before the pandemic. And another sign the Labor Department remains challenged. Winter storms last week may have obscured the true picture of the workforce. Generally, though, virus restrictions have been lifting and there's more activity among the service industry. Yeah, virus stuff its what it's about, you know, but it's also about us. And our leaders, and at what point in time are we going to get ourselves into a position where our leaders are going to release the power? It's very interesting. Uh, I've read several articles over the last few days about that, not just here, but globally. Uh, The Democratic leaders, not talking about dictators, the hardest thing for so many of these people that are in power to do is to give back the power, is to loosen the regulation. They want a strong economy. They want a vibrant economy because at the end of the day, it's the economy, stupid, right? I don't care how well you do on the virus. If you flounder in the economy, Joe, bye-bye. 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 I don't care. If you flounder on the economy, you will be... That's... I mean, it, look, at any other time in history, somebody not Donald Trump was in a situation where they saw the pandemic close everything down and crush a portion of the economy, yet we were still managing to, to motor along outside of a few key industries. That person would have lost by, uh, it might have been a shutout. Because Trump did well on the economy. He did. He did well. Well Well-ish. Better than I think some people want to give him credit for. And maybe not as great as he'd give himself credit for. But he did pretty damn good. It's it's the economy, stupid. But they're going to fight themselves inside. Oh, God, they want me to give back their power. I like telling them to, to do stuff. I like the fact that we can kind of like, you know, influence them. In some ways. And even if. And, and and I'm not saying this is nefarious. I'm not saying the likes of Fauci and, and Biden are somehow some nefarious characters that are running around, you know, screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs. Do this, do that or else. I'm not saying that. It's the subtle things and even more so at the state and local levels. Because they've managed to take something and make themselves extremely important in the middle of this and have an inflated belief about the things that they're doing. You saw that with a lot of, you saw that with perfect example is Cuomo. Now Cuomo's getting his ass handed to him as he should. And the news came out yesterday that apparently he had some untoward kissing going on allegedly. But you can't tell me that seeing the cameras there all day and, and and yeah, you're you here. You are man. You're the governor of New York, but you've got you. You're holding court. Now take that down to something. Mayors, health inspectors, and chiefs across the country. Yeah, you can't tell me that. There's not a sense. So giving back that power is going to be tough. But if you want to get ourselves up and running, you're going to have to get back some of that power. It's going to have to happen. Have you ever noticed that every time, you know, they come out with some new variant, uh, this could be the deadliest thing ever? Hey, you remember that other variant we had? Yeah, there's that that was nothing. That was a that was that was a skinned knee compared to this. What's this one like? It's like a laser beam with Ebola. No way. Yep, totally. Yeah, oh. And you find out well it's really not, because then they, you know, the pharmaceutical comes. Oh yeah, we tested it, it's not that big of a deal. It's always doom. It's always gloom. It's always it's never like none of these people should ever be up for, hey, I'm going to go to this this seminar this weekend. You know, it's one of those great powering yourself in seminars. And government officials don't give those. <laughs> they don't. And they're running with this. And giving back the power, whether it's here or other places, Germany, France, Boris Johnson in the U.K., right, Macron, Trudeau, all of them mm, it's giving, giving that back. 
And they want to, but they also want to feel needed. And they know they need to, but they also want to hold on to some of this. And if you think we're getting it all back, you're fooling yourself. Some states will give it back. Other states, they'll hold on. And that's frustrating. It is. Now, Johnson & Johnson yesterday uh, got emergency, I guess, it's really weird. So, like, you know, you, you get an emergency, yes, we've looked at all the data, and so you can go ahead and do this, but you still have to go through another step uh, and then do that over there with us again, but that's a formality. Well, then let's just get it rolling. At this point, can we not just get it rolling? The data looks good. New data showing Johnson & Johnson's data. one-shot vaccine may be 100% effective at preventing hospitalization and death. An early analysis hinting it may offer 70% protection against asymptomatic infections, making those vaccinated less likely to spread the disease. Yeah, that's that's good. Yesterday, I, I posted that. I had more people push back. That's not good. That's not 100%. Well, you're not going to get 100%. And some things you might, you're not going to get 100%. You don't get 100% for the flu, but you still go to work every day. You get 100% for the flu, and you still go out and you go to a movie and you eat dinner. You don't get 100%. You still go play sports and go to concerts. You don't get 100%. You still live life. You don't even get 50% in some seasons. Don't shut the world down for it. Oh, yeah. Still, though. No, not still, though. And I'm amazed at the fact that, once again, this is how you could see your the inflatedness of it. Like, I know, look, I know me. I'm of no importance. I disappear. Nobody cares. My family will care. Everybody cares. I'm not, I, I'm not one of these people that believe like, oh, you, 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 you know this and I know this. That we like to think we're more. Well, take that to a government official who have people now going, well, the government says that I can't do this or the government says that I shouldn't do that. Or I post this yesterday. This is the game changer. And I've always said this was because of the mass quantity of people that this can can reach in a much easier way with a one-shot delivery and we're more apt to get one shot than two because as we all know convenience is most important to all of us people were pushing back chad it's only 66 percent. it's only 70 percent. i said first of all this data while good we won't know what the data looks like totally And part of that is because we've not real-world tested any of these. Now, the Pfizer one has been real-world tested in a major way in Israel. In a major, major way in Israel. It's been totally real-world tested. What's real-world tested compared to this? Well, real-world tested is living. So if if you get the vaccine, because remember originally when when, when we weren't totally in lockdown and they were trying to figure this stuff out and they started testing people? One of the things they didn't want to do was test people who were going to then go back inside their house, wear a mask all day and never go anywhere, because how would we know how this thing would interact with anything if you're by yourself? It's the same thing with this in mass. I mean, we we know 30, 40, 50, 100,000, 200. We, we don't really know until you give it a try. <laughs> like we think the plane's going to fly. It looks like it's going to fly. We think it's going to taste good. Well, Well, let's take a bite. Let's see. That's what this is all about. If you're looking for perfection, if you're looking to get down to zero, it ain't going to happen. It isn't. If you're looking to get to the point where this is going to be zero, where it's 100% all the time, one shot, never going to need another shot, it ain't going to happen. But it doesn't happen with anything, right? Because I have news for you. The minute this thing gets completely under control, we'll still have to worry about the flu. We're going to still have to worry about allergies. We're going to still have to worry about cancer and HIV and other things. Those things haven't gone away. They've, they, they've persisted the entire time. You're not going to get 100%. And too many people, I think, want perfection. And they've been sold a bill of goods by people now who feel like, well, I, I'm pulling the strings. I'm the wizard. And I don't know if I want to give stuff back. I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. Mm. Mm. Maybe. May not quite sure. Mm. Now the question is how soon for Johnson and Johnson?
It's not a guarantee, but all signs are that it's a go. And the Biden administration says as soon as they get the green light, they are ready to go. So three to four million doses could be going out next week. That's great. Next week is beautiful. So we want to hear. And unlike three or four million of Pfizer going out, this is three or four million that are immediate. You give people shots, they move on. That's all you're getting. New report yesterday is a perfect example of something. New report yesterday comes out and says what? We just need to be given to everybody. If you got 50 million shots, give out 50 million. Well, what do we, shouldn't we do it twice? Give out 50 million. Just give them out. Don't care. Just give them out. If I was running a state, I'm just giving them out. I'm giving out to everybody over the age of 30. You're getting a shot. That's what you're getting. Here you go. Let's go. Well, what about old people? I'm giving it to old people. I'm giving it to 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 everybody. Over and, and the more that I can vaccinate, the faster I can get to a point where the spread is completely slowed down to the point where you're getting single digits, hopefully, sooner rather than later, it's statewide. But they're all doing their own thing, and part of that's the power thing. We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it here. It's going to be based on this. It's going to be based on that. It's the economy, stupid. And as goes this, so goes the economy. But also, as goes the people and the powers that be, so will go your economy. Some want to celebrate the economy and get it rocking and rolling and allow people to make their own decisions. Others want to have their fingerprints on everything, and they will decide how things go and don't go. There's a reason they call it a governor. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Hope you're doing well. Got a poll up, and I was surprised about it. Just put this up yesterday. Just want to know, do you think we're going to get back to normal anytime soon, this year? And I think it's important, because how do you feel about it? 22% say yes. Some states gets 29.3%. So, yeah, some states will, some states won't. That's where I lie. I think most states will get to a decent anywhere between 80 to 100 percent. Some other states, I think, are going to languish. 11.3 percent say I'm living that way now, but almost 40 percent say no. That's fascinating. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter. Car Shield will shield you from bad things. We talked about it yesterday, about the story that's out, the new study that says, on average, nine days. Nine days people drive around without what? Taking their car in after their check engine light comes on. And there's a lot of reasons for that. A lot of it is you're terrified. You don't know what's wrong with it. You don't know what's wrong with it, and you're going to go, I'm going to have to wait to my next paycheck. That's why you get Car Shield. With Car Shield, you get 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. You choose the shop. They get them paid directly. It's simple. This isn't, this isn't rocket science, people. It's America's number one auto protection company. Over a million drivers they've helped, and they want to help you. Plans start as low as $99 a month, whether your car's a little bit older or brand new, right? Maybe you went out, but you don't have a warranty for things like the electronics. Like my car, I have a warranty for the engine, my newer one. I do not have a warranty for the sensors. And I already had an issue, took it in. CarShield took care of everything. Plans start as low as $99 a month. Call them. Protect yourself, protect your car, protect your wallet. That's what Car Shield's all about. 800 665 2157. Use code Benson or go to carshield.com, carshield.com. Use code Benson. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. If you like talk radio, like Chad Benson likes his meals. You've come to the perfect place for takeout. The report came in from the pilots of American Airlines Flight 2292 heading to Phoenix, flying at altitude, calling in that something had just missed them. Have any targets up here? We just had something go right over the top of us. The audio from Live ATC, the pilots describing what they saw. I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing. But radar didn't show anything in the area. It's now an unidentified flying object the FBI is investigating. Yeah. And they're taking it serious, by the way. <laughs> it used to be a time, uh, and producer Phil, you know this because of, uh, well, 
you love these kind of things, uh, uh, where pilots would never say anything, ever. Yeah, would ever. Ju- they would just talk amongst themselves about it, but they'd never be an official report. And the reason was simple, because you get psychological evaluations. If they think you're seeing little green men, and it's always little green men, first of all, we don't know what it is. And a, a UFO is not a UFO in the sense that everybody thinks, well, it's a UFO, so it's, it's – it, it's, no. Unidi- an unidentified flying object means – I see something. It's flying. I can't tell you what it is. I can't identify it. It's not an airplane, but it's not a missile, but it's something. Okay. Doesn't mean there's little green men. It's always little green men, right? What if they get here and they're like these regular people? Like, oh my God, we have a it's a dimension thing. You guys are the U. You guys are still in the UFO that we went through a phase. <laughs> Don't worry, we went through it too. What? What if that? The weird thing, though, and if you read the stuff, first of all, it's near a certain area in New Mexico. I think we know what we're talking about. Uh, Plus, there's a lot of stuff on the Nevada, New Mexico kind of area in and around from here to Phoenix, where I'm in Phoenix from there to Phoenix. So there's, there's things that get tested there. On top of all of that, the thing, though, when you read it that's weird is the fact that nobody had it on its radar. They're like, we're looking at it. <laughs> Do you have it on your radar? Nope. Do you guys have it on your radar? Nope. And it's probably, more than likely, stuff that we're testing. And they're going, ah, it works. Told you guys it would work. What are you guys going to call it? We'll call it the Harry Potter. It's a cloak thing. It's pretty nice. Still kind of cool, though, right? Still kind of cool. I have a buddy who flies for Evy Air, and he used to tell me, I've seen some stuff. And I said, did you talk about it? We never talk about it. They're more open to it now, talking about it. But still, I could see why you'd be worried. Like, you know, if, 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 if you saw an elf, and you swear to God it was an elf, and you run around telling your friends, there's a little itty-bitty elf in the backyard, a little fairy, people are like, you're nuts. Right? Well, that's the way it used to be for pilots. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. For the bill's $2 trillion, coming right behind it is another $3 trillion that President Biden wants for green infrastructure. The motto of the Biden administration seems to be, we can't spend too much. Any fair-minded person knows that that's a very... uh, superficial, infantile approach. Either that or the people advising President Biden have an opium habit. Oh, I love John Kennedy. That guy is just the best. Uh, Yeah, the bill. You know, it's funny. Like, 7 out of 10 Americans support the bill. No, 7 out of 10 Americans support getting another $1,400. They don't know what's in it. They don't. They have no idea what's in it. It's like a hot dog. I like the taste of it, and I don't want to know how it's made because it benefits me now because I have a hunger to fill, and I like the taste of my Hebrew national or my Nathan's or my Farmer John. I, I like the taste of it. I don't really want to know what's in it. The benefit to me is I get to eat, and it, takes care of the need that I have of hunger and a little bit of gluttony because you're like, oh, it's a barbecue. Like Normally, if I go to a store or a restaurant, I only have one of these hot dogs, but now that I'm cooking it myself, I'll have 12. (laughs) So (laughs) so true. You go to a restaurant, you go to Red Robin, right? You're like, I'll have have a cheeseburger, and you get a cheeseburger. You're at home, you barbecue, and I'm like, I can have four of these. (laughs) 
Well, I made them. How many calories did that take? Same thing here. Come on, guys. So much crap. By the way, we still have a trillion dollars we haven't spent. And most of this stuff doesn't even come into play for like a year. It's a long time. But the 7 out of 10, don't be fooled by that. That's people who want the stimulus because they've been promised the stimulus because they've seen over the last year the collapsing of certain parts of the economy. And so they're saying to themselves, selves, I could use another 1400 bucks right about now. I mean, any fool can spend money. The objective is not to spend money. It's not how much you spend. It's what you spend it on. Ninety five percent of President Biden's bill is not going to even be spent until 2022 and beyond. This isn't a coronavirus bill. This is a left of Lenin neo-socialist wish list. I mean, it just is. It is chock full of spending porn. He's right. And I am pers- look. I, I, the, the Republicans lost me a long time ago when it comes to a lot of this stuff because they they were never as much as they pretend like they're going to be like oh we're for-. there's a few deficit hawks but mostly they'd spend the hell out of your money anyways just where they wanted to spend it was something at this point though so much of this is true lots of bailouts for certain things especially a lot of big pensions that are really. In, in serious trouble, a lot of big states that have high taxes and their tax revenues, guess what? They're not rocking and rolling right about now, and they need help making sure they pay for a lot of different things. But it's a, a lot of states, right? Because here's the thing, red or blue, if you see in the state next year, you get a ton of money, like, well, we need some, right? It's the federal money. We don't care. We, you want to give us some? People are frustrated. So they don't care what's inside of it if they get the 1400 bucks. Plus, their kids get their money, and it all adds up. If you think to yourself, are you for getting an extra $4,000? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Of course you are. How about this? Let's send people back to work. How about that? How about we do that? To me, that's the most important thing. How do we get ourselves back? Part of that is the vaccine. And as we all know, the vaccine They say we need probably five, although I've heard more people say we need three vaccines to get to that point. We're going to get to some sort of of continuous herd immunity. And we don't know what the lasting effect is going to be across the board. Is this a booster shot you need every year? Do you get to a point where, like the Spanish flu, the, the variant of the Spanish flu is still around. But eventually, we built up a certain amount of immunity that even if you got it, it was more no more than a nuisance than a oh-my-God scenario. So this, let's get these things into people's arms and or give them, of course, the most important thing, which is a choice, which still gets left out of all the conversations about where we move forward with this. The choice. What's the choice? The choice is the train moves, not the station, meaning every governor and, yes, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, needs to start setting certain dates, not open-ended dates that we see, but here it is. By May 1st, there will be enough for everybody to get a shot. By July 1st, you've had your opportunity. We have now decided we're moving on. And by that, we mean living life pre-coronavirus, as if nothing ever happened. Going to the store without a mask. Going to the movie without a mask. Because you could go to the movie. Going to see concerts, sporting events, giving somebody a hug. But you've got to put a date on it, because if you don't do that, it'll be open ended. And if and we all know government doesn't want to sunset anything, they don't have to. That goes back to that power thing we touched on earlier. One of the hardest things these people are going to have to do, both at the federal level and at the national level, is unwind their power. We know they don't like that. They seem important now. Well, they're ultra important, the most important they've ever been. So, let's go. 
Let's put a date on this thing. Let's get moving. Tiger Woods. Not being charged with anything. They said it was an accident. That's all it was, was an accident. The investigation is far from over. Authorities indicated speed may have been a factor. They expect to learn more about the vehicle prior to the crash because it's equipped with a data recorder, similar to a black box on a plane, which should reveal how fast the SUV was traveling. Yeah. Was he going too fast? Well, obviously, that's that's definitely uh, a... I think we're not even debating. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was. Is he used to driving a car rather than an SUV? And one of the things that this new thing has is kind of that, you know, that self-driving thing that they've talked about. Will, was there something in this that maybe he was doing that? I don't know. We're gonna, they're going to they're going to they're going to spin their wheels, if you will, over and over again, trying to figure yourself out when it comes to the crash itself. As for Tiger. Did he have issues that day? Because that's important. Earlier in the day or later on in the day, but earlier before the crash, people said that he was pissed. And, you know, some people said they he he, he almost hit some people. And, you know, and we all know you don't drive angry. The L.A. County Sheriff says Woods had no recollection of the wreck when he was questioned at the hospital. And before the crash, TMZ reports Woods seemed agitated and impatient at the parking lot of his hotel. A witness telling TMZ Woods SUV was blocked by another car unloading luggage. The witness added once the delay was over, Woods took off fast. Investigators say Woods was not under the influence. Yeah. So uh, there's that. And then the other question now with Tiger is, will he? Will he come back? And we talked about it yesterday. You know, I, I, I think if he comes back, like if he comes back, he comes back to win. He was at the end of it anyways. And we, 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 we've talked a lot about he was at the end. There, the game was hard. Every swing, the game, as we already know, is hard. But... Every swing now was tough. Every single step he hurt. You didn't know what you were going to get the next day. right? So you go out and you shoot a minus four and you think you're feeling no good. You wake up and next morning you're back stiff and you can't walk. And you, and, and, and you go out and you shoot six over and, and you, you miss the cut. Father Time is undefeated. Now, we have figured out a way to extend Father Time, see Tom Brady. right? Like yesterday, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers like, hey, we might give him an extra couple of years. But he, Father Time still going to beat Tom. That, that, that's not going to change. And I, I, I did a couple you know, interviews yesterday, and, it, and people asked me, and I said, you know what? I said, he's 46, 45, 46, with probably a 65-year-old body. As far as the the surgeries, the knee problems, the the back surgeries, the the, the rotator cuff injury. I mean, you go through. He he is as beat up as as NFL players. Does he want it? He didn't look. I don't think he's got a lot of time. Anyways, I, I mean, he was never. He never ever struck me as the person that's going to go play on the seniors tour, the champions tour with the fifteen over. That never. He. Nah, I don't think he's ever going to do that. I don't think he was ever going to do that. But I don't know. He may be done. And and a lot will really just step, you know, think about the the how much does he want it? Like, do you want this really? Do you have that drive? You've got several hundred million dollars in the bank. And so it's not like you're gonna wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden it's gone. You've been at this. I mean, do you even love the game? You know, that's the other thing is, is that that I asked several people. Do you think you even love the game anymore? If you watch any of those documentaries, and especially the new one out that's on HBO, that 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 series thing, you watch that. It, it, a lot of it was about his dad, and I think as much as it, it it got to him with his dad and his dad living his life through him at the same time. That was the thing that bonded them. And I think like a lot of times, sometimes when that's over, you may not have that love anymore of the game.
that used to have? Is it the grind? Are you still looking forward to it? That's when you know it's over. Right? That's when you know it's it it's it's over. It's when you're like, I don't want to I, I don't want to practice. I don't want to do any of this stuff anymore. So we'll see. It's gonna be interesting though. But it doesn't look like there was any issues, if you will, as far as drugs. Obviously, they ruled out drink already. And now the question that everybody is going to ask for the coming months, because it's, that's the question people have been asking for the last several years. Is Tiger going to come back? Is he going to play again? Is he going to come back? Is he going to do it? This is the biggest is he ever that's going to be asked. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. All right. So Paramount. It's got its new streaming thing. We're going to touch on that. Plus, they've announced some movies that will be on there. And now this is one of those things like, oh, God, really? Moment for me, which frustrates me because that usually means i got to go spend another six ninety nine dollars for something. So, Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. A lot of news from Paramount Plus, which is the rebranded and revamped streaming service CBS All Access. On the TV side, announcing that Frasier is coming back with star Kelsey Grammer, RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars moving from VH1 to Paramount Plus, and shows including Rugrats and Inside Amy Schumer are getting a revival. As for movies, you need to walk away. Upcoming blockbusters, including Mission Impossible 7 and A Quiet Place 2, will debut on Paramount Plus just 45 days after they hit theaters, way earlier than usual. Paramount Plus officially debuts March 4th and starts at 5 bucks a month. Yeah, so there's another 5 bucks if I don't watch any of those. We were just talking. Has there ever been a remake of a television show that you were like, that was good, that was worth it? No? I mean, are they bringing everybody back from Frasier that's still around? Right? Because I think the dad has passed away, right? Niles is still around. Uh, you've got Frasier, obviously, and the the ladies. So are we bringing everyone back or is it just, you know, is he is he going to be one of those things where he lives in like Boca Raton and he's retired now and he just writes books and his brother comes over every once in a while? I don't know. I don't know what why. Quiet Place 2? I'm pumped. I want to see that. Not going to lie. It looks like a good, good – I love the first one. Loved, loved, loved. If you have not seen it, spoiler alert, go see it. It's going to be great. It's just – I think this will be good. I, I get excited. I can't. You know, that's the. Th- I, I go back to it over and over again. The movies. The movies. Because it was the simple thing. Yes, I play a lot of golf. You know, I have. I'm very much a routine cat. And you know, I got my routine things. And that I do. And I'm a movie guy. I love my movies. And it sucks. It sucks because I haven't seen a movie in 13 years. I haven't seen a movie in 13 months where I've been to a theater. And that's one of those little things to me that drive me crazy. If there wasn't golf, I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> really don't. I mean, at that point in time, I'm like, oh, how, I have 450 lizards. <laughs> like, I, I do every – and part of the reason I golf and part of the reason I like to go to the movies is because if I didn't, I would have 415 lizards. I have enough lizards. I went into one of my big lizards last night. I was like, my God, Norman, you're huge. He's like, he's getting huge. And I'm like, I'm feeding you too much. You, He's going through his pandemic. He's got his pandemic 15 put on. And part of that's because of me. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Ah, oh, goodness me. So getting close to vaccines, it's going to be important. We got more and more of these vaccines coming out. And Johnson and Johnson, and it, it, to me, I've always said it was the game changer because of how you can refrigerate it, which is basically a regular refrigerator. Uh, even Pfizer now, with all of the updates, say that you can put it into a, a, a pharmacy grade refrigerator where it's at zero or minus five. Your refrigerator home's not at that, but it's not, you know, it needs to be kept at minus 95 degrees. We got to get there. 
But there also has to be a come to Jesus moment with every single American. And that is simply this. At some time, we're going to get back on our feet where we're going to just say it's time to live life normal again. And in and, and doing that, that means that some of you who have decided not to take this for whatever reason, maybe it's a legit reason, maybe it is a religious reason, maybe you have really bad allergies and it's just something you can't do. Or maybe it's because you like you know you think it's going to change who you are in your DNA and you're going to become a fish or something. I don't know, but you you understand what's happening, and you get that, and so you've had your opportunities, you have poo pooed them. It's time for us to live our lives, because right now the prevent defense we're playing is not good at all. For all of us. Talked yesterday about my son and just how beyond frustrated he is here. It's my 10-year-old son. Finds out he's probably not going back to school the rest of this year. And he lost it the other night. we got to get back to life. Part of life is the calculated risk. But that's what makes life worth living. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show's your Twitter. Tweet, text, Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. There's a lot of optimism as well over the Johnson & Johnson vaccine single dose. What's your yeah, take on said it? Johnson. At the end of the day, this is a very, very good vaccine. I would certainly take it. I would have my family members take it. Uh, again, as you said, it prevents hospitalizations and deaths. That's what we care about. And the bottom line is it's still quite effective at preventing regular infections. Bottom line is hospitalizations and deaths, and that's where it's excellent. Isn't that what it's all about? I was talking to people yesterday because I told them, they're like, well, the effectiveness isn't great. It is great. You live. <laughs> right? Is that, is, at the end of the day, that's the, it's the whole point. How was your flight? It was bumpy. Did you live? Yep. Okay. It's a win. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's all I care about because that shows me. We can get on, and that's what it's about, baby. Getting on, we're getting on. And we haven't been getting on. We've been languishing. Some states have been getting on. Other states have been moseying. And some states are, I don't even know. It's about getting on. And the other thing about Johnson & Johnson is it's been put to the test. They've tested against other variants, which matters because some of these things like we don't know if it's a work against this variant the south african the brazilian is there a dutch there should be a dutch one it's a california one. Oh my god a california's got their own they got all kinds of stuff in california they got taxes overbearing government and yes their own variant but making sure it works against these things matters what do we know about the effectiveness now of all the vaccines against the variants that are cropping up? Yeah, I remain pretty optimistic um, against the UK variant. These vaccines are very good uh, against any of the variants that have popped up from the United States. They're very good. The one that has had some concern is the South African variant. The vaccines seem to still work pretty well, but we may need to at some point down the road update our vaccines. We'll have to see. Of course, because you're going to want to get to the point where you don't have to freeze it right in Siberian temperatures. And on top of that, make it so maybe it's an every other year, every five years, or a one-off. So you're going to be updating it. It's about getting it into what? People's arms or butts, by the way, or butts. And that was one of the questions. It's like, could you get this in your butt? And I'm like, I, I, you know, apparently it's been asked uh, and, and it's now been answered. Yes, you can get this in your butt. If you want to get this in your butt. You can get this. It's weird, though, because I get all mad because I go through one of those drive through ones. I'm like, there it is. I've yet, I'm kidding, people. I've yet to have the vaccine because I have the antibodies. And I think I have to wait 
you know, I don't know how many days you're supposed to wait. Some people say 90. Some people say 120. My doctor's like, just don't worry about it. Just get it when you get it. And that's really what it's about. It's about getting it. If people have a choice, which vaccine should they take? I really think, and I mean this, this is what I said to my family, people should get whatever vaccine is available and not worry about picking between all three of these excellent vaccines. So you think whichever one you can get, whenever you can get it, you should get it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like dating. (laughs) Just get it. But the other one gets 93.8%. This one's only getting like a C plus or a B minus. Just get it. They all get A's in keeping you alive. But I could catch it. You could. The one that will have an upper hand, and this will also be real-world testing, is the one that works best in helping you not just not get it, but also spread it. That's the one that will have the upper hand. But we also live in a world of, well, I've got it. I've got the vaccine, so I'm fine. <laughs> I don't care if you get it at this point. I care. Do I have it? I've got protection. I'm getting on with getting on. It's still, though, the question of normalcy. When can we? When's it going to happen? Those are going to be state-by-state state issues. So my brother asks me all the time, when do you think we're going to get back to normal? So you live in California? It's hard to say. Could be June, July-ish. You'll see some real normalcy by fall. Kids back in school. Life's back to normal. We're, we're, We're not talking about this thing. It's not top of the mind. The news has got to find other things to focus on. It's a possibility. I said some, you know, for, for, for I think a lot of states, even some of the states like California, I joke around, but there is also that, that part that we've been touching on, which is the giving back the power. The giving back the power to individuals and people to make the decision, which is why a drop dead date, and that sounds awful, but that's the reality. The drop dead date of if you leave it open ended, which is we're not really sure, that says to me government's going to be like, we're going to ride this for as long as we can. This is a money train. This is a power train. And we've got it. And right now, you guys are screwed. So without that kind of, hey, this is when it's do- we're doing this, y- y- you know, who knows? But I still think a majority, it, I tell everybody, look for normalcy, normalcy when kids go back to school fully. And that doesn't mean plexiglass, mask, you know, two days a week, but they're going to school They're living life. They're fighting with their friends. They're loving their friends. They're falling in love. They're falling out of love. They're all of that stuff. Do a little bit of the math. Getting the vaccine and having it available is not the same as putting it in someone's arm. This is going to be a continuous rolling effort. We will have ordered over 600 million doses by the end of July. July 29th is the expected date. That could change. Look what's happening with the weather now, for example. I believe we'll be approaching normalcy by the end of this year. God willing, this Christmas will be different than last. But I can't make that commitment to you. And that's... That's the worst answer you can give. Because you're not giving an answer. You're leaving it open-ended. Here's a perfect example. Hey, boss. We've talked about it before. We know how things are going. And uh, I'm, you know what, I, I... I, I want to raise. I want an opportunity to advance with the whole night. I can't really give you a commitment. Okay. I just need to know. Well, why can't you give me a commitment? Because you're going to play the long game with somebody. You you do it. People do it in relationships, right? See how long we can string this thing out. I don't want to not be around this person, but I may not want to be around them forever. 
Well, Chad, they want to get... No, they don't. Politicians see opportunity where other people are just trying to survive. Right? You heard me say, I can't make that commitment to you. That's the worst thing. No, you make that commitment. The commitment is we're going to have enough vaccines for everybody to get a shot. Hell, we'll have enough for everybody to get two, three. Take them home and hand them out to your friends. Give them to your pets. You saying that tells me we'll see. Right? We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe next year. Maybe maybe the end of this year, but I can't make that commitment to you. God willing. No, not God willing. God's put all the things he needs to in place to make sure that we have the shots that we're going to need and we're going to go get them. At that point, I feel like you're still going to slow everything down. And that's why your state will dictate far more than the feds. Because if it was up to the feds, I think they would... They'd have a slow down, very, oh, oh, slow, slow, slow down, slow down, slow, 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 slow. No, we want to get back on the freeway and go. I don't need to drive inside of the neighborhood anymore. I've already driven on the freeway a thousand times. It's time for us to move. Nope, we decided we're just going to do this right here in the street. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, and one of the things that's going to happen, and continually happen, is you're going to hear people who are going to be angry, and they're going to continue to get angry, but it isn't until it starts to truly fall on deaf ears, which I think it's starting to happen with things like Fauci. The worst thing that you can be is irrelevant. Right now, Donald Trump, former president of the United States, he's kind of irrelevant. You can really hear from him, right? Other people say, I talk to him, or they'll tweet stuff about him, but there, there is, there, he, out of sight, out of mind. People stop paying attention to the message. Biden, we'll see what happens. But that could come sooner rather than later. And when you get more and more job numbers that are ugly, you're going to get more and more people that are going to stop paying attention to the message, and they'll start pushing back in ways that will truly hurt. Like saying, you know what? I think we made, you'll start to hear things like, I think we made a mistake. Or I think this has gone on long enough. Or, and that will make them go, huh? But as long as there isn't any of that, it's still game on. 730,000 laid-off Americans filed new claims for jobless benefits last week. That's better than it has been, but still higher than anything seen before the pandemic. And another sign the Labor Department remains challenged. Winter storms last week may have obscured the true picture of the workforce. Generally, though, virus restrictions have been lifting, and there's more activity among the service industry. Which is great. We need that. Stuff's lifting. But when I hear him say, I can't make a commitment about when things are going to come back to normal... That says unwinding the power that they feel that they have is going to be far tougher. Your state may do it different than other states. And I think you're going to see some states wide open sooner rather than later. And I still think you're going to see a lot of states. The only reason California is even thinking about opening some of the ways that they are, and same thing with New York, is because their governors are in trouble. That's it. It's the only reason. Newsom's facing a recall, and Cuomo's got all kinds of issues from, you know, killing the old people thing. But he won an Emmy to now allegedly kissing staffers. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you, Wounded Paw Project. Amazing organization. Imagine coming home. You've been in. You've been in war. You've been in the theater. You, you. You've had several tours, and and now you're coming home. Home, and what happens? All too often, some are struggling with with physical, but a majority are struggling with with PTSD, and they're struggling even when when you know they get back into what they think is normal. They're still having trouble with that transitioning into day to day life. And that's why Wounded Paw really came about. They rescue animals and train them to be service dogs. So they take dogs that are that are that are uh, 
on their last leg as far as, hey, you know what, You've, we, we can't get rid of this dog. We're going to have to euthanize it. And they take those dogs and they train them for veterans, first responders, and their families. And they realize the need that's out there. Now, you can help. You can donate in many different ways. But one of the best ways to donate is a vehicle. Great tax-deductible gift. And who doesn't want to write some stuff off? So if it flies, it flows. If your ATV, your dirt bike, whatever it is, canoe, they'll take it. And a great tax deductible will get. Find out how you can get involved by going to WoundedPawProject.org. 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 You'll be saving a paw to save a life. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? A lot of stuff is trending, people. Let's start over in the magical world of... Google. So Johnson and Johnson yesterday, decent amount of run, top five of trending. Number one thing was GameStop because it jumped again in the stock world. It's down, it's up, it's down. It's it's become the stock that everybody can play. So because the Reddit people are coming at it again, have fun with it. Again, if you've got the money. Knock it out. But we saw after the first ass whooping, right? So they kicked the butt of of a few hedge funds while other hedge funds made hay and printed money against some of those. Some individuals did really well, but there was a lot of other individuals who chased it at 200 plus, 300 plus dollars and got their ass handed to them. And so it's back up now. And if you've got some of that, have fun. I'm a, Look, I am great. Just know what you're getting into, right? Just know what you're getting into. Johnson & Johnson, absolutely trending big time, as is Bruce Springsteen. He was uh, his drunken driving that ended up being basically drinking on the street or something. So, like, he shouldn't even have he, – he, he was like a .02 instead of a .08, which is so bizarre. It's just the whole thing was like, ugh. Head on over to Twitter. Lots of the usual stuff of people arguing because that's, God, it's amazing, right? It doesn't, I'm telling you, man, it's a sunny, beautiful day today. You suck. Okay. And there's, then there'll be something racial. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. So let's take a look at what's trending over there. Politics again, always. And there's some interesting things out there in the world of politics. Uh, Marjorie, or Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's trending because people have posted anti-trans signs outside her door. Or she did uh, in response to fellow Congressman Marie Newman putting a transgender pride flag outside. And somehow that she's evil. Stop using other people as a way to elevate yourself. Right? Your, your battle against the trans people. Nothing against people trans. My godson's trans. I love them. It's great. Moving on with their life. And and stop holding them up as, uh, you know, it's it's crazy. It is the way that people do. Brian Williams getting praised because of the way that uh, he and MSNBC handled the remote feed issues that took place. Because there was issues there. And happy birthday trending to uh, George Harrison, who would have been alive on this day had he lived. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at you're such a jerk. Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at me. Text the program. He's never a huge fan of the Beatles. I know that's weird, right? I was just never a massive fan of the Beatles. I mean, I like their music, but I just never was like, oh my god. Chad Benson show. Chad Benson Show. It's 
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Getting the vaccine and having it available is not the same as putting it in someone's arm. This is going to be a continuous rolling effort. We will have ordered over 600 million doses by the end of July. July 29th is the expected date. That could change. Look what's happening with the weather now, for example. I believe we'll be approaching normalcy by the end of this year. God willing, this Christmas will be different than last. But I can't make that commitment to you. That's the worst answer you could give, President. Thank you very much. Can't make that commitment to you. Okay. Look, things can happen. I'm not looking for you to make a commitment. What I'm looking for you to do is to tell everybody this is when we're going back to normal. If we have a magical new variant that comes out of somewhere and none of these vaccines work, okay, we talk about it. But at this point in time... We have a precipitous drop in the number of people that are infected. So the commitment I'm looking for you is a drop dead date of when you've had the opportunity to get a vaccine and when we're going to allow people to get their lives back to normal. Now, you may want to live in your house. You may want to get the vaccine, wait for this thing to be 100 percent, and you may want to do all of those things. That's a you thing. Everybody else, though, if they want to get back to living, they can get back to living. The non-committal, because what that says to me is don't think your kids are starting school next year. And you're going to see this. New Mexico, a lot of of places around the country are bumping teachers up. That's the first thing. The first thing I said is give teachers the shot first. I said give teachers the shot first. Obviously, you know, healthcare workers and, and, and many of them. In a lot of places, especially nurses, are like, I want to wait and see. Even some doctors, but healthcare workers, but then the teachers. So we can get them back in the classroom. So we can take the pressure off our kids in a lot of different ways. Pressure off ourselves, too. Four million jobs have disappeared or or have changed hands in in many cases because parents, and in particular women, Made the sacrifice to go, all right, well, I, I can't do anything with my kids, you know, because the place that I could send them is closed. So now I'm having to do this. So that's happened. So teachers, but teachers, you got you get this damn thing? You better get this damn thing back on track. Meaning you get a shot, you better get back in the classroom. New Mexico, teachers the other day. They're getting pushed to the front of the line. Zero problems with that. But it's about getting back in the classroom, right? Well, now they're saying, well, we've taken, uh, we've also uh, uh, taken uh, uh, a poll, and now our majority of our teachers uh, don't want to go back until the kids can get a shot. That wasn't that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. That's not it. You get a shot, you get back in the classroom. Period. Case closed. And if you don't want to go in the classroom, you need to find a new J-O-B. Period. Case closed. You need to find a new job. If you got moved to the front, and I was all for it, then you need to get back in the classroom. And if that's something where... All of a sudden, your union, and now they're saying, well, what about this, that? No, 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 no. That is the deal. You get the shot first, you get your butt back in the classroom. And if you don't want to go back to the classroom, then you get your butt to a new job. It's that simple. And I don't think, how many people is going to argue with that? Some will. Well, I think no, because they're just now starting testing on children. And I wouldn't give my kid the shot. I'm like, he's 10. He doesn't need the shot. He's fine. He needs to build up some immunity anyways to life, like a lot of these kids who are dipped in Purell. It's nuts. 323 538 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. You know, I... I, I 
Like if you're if you're some kids are in school, right? Some kids are back at school and they're in school. And other kids aren't. You know, it's because of, you know, for whatever reasons. And most a majority of kids across the country who are in school, minus a few states, they're in private school or charter schools. One private school, a Catholic school, asked three of their students to leave, not because they had a coronavirus, but because they had a hot mom. Yeah, Tony, Crystal Jackson says it's these photos that got her three kids under the age of 12 kicked out of Sacred Heart Parish here. But she says she's done nothing wrong. And she says there's nothing Catholic about the way she's now being treated. Crystal Jackson, known as Mrs. Poindexter Online, was shocked at how quickly her hot mom only fans account grew. We think of it as artistic or sultry and sexy and fun and playful, but certainly nothing hardcore. It's not hardcore, by the way. We've all done our research, Mrs. Poindexter. So it's not. I mean, her Instagram, there, uh, there are people on Instagram that are, are as racy as any of these things. It's PG-13, maybe a little. It's not. It's not bad. It's not. And, you know, look, I'm to be honest with you here, you know. When you hear the kind of numbers, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I look as good as she does. Not me. I don't. I'm, people, they'll be like, put your clothes back on. I'll pay you whatever you want to put your clothes back on. I will. And that was her husband, by the way. He takes the photos. So not doing anything legal. There's no hardcore. There isn't sex or any of these kind of things. You don't know what OnlyFans is. It started out, I think, it, maybe it was before or after, but it really became a rival of Patreon where you, you have patrons. And so whatever it is you do, maybe you learn how to fix cars, maybe you draw, draw anime, maybe it's adult stuff, uh, maybe you have a podcast and you build up a fan base and they subscribe essentially every month. They donate X amount of dollars to you, four, five, ten dollars $10, $25, and for each level you get a certain level of something and they unlock something else. And OnlyFans has really become popular over the last 24 months. But really, this last year, it's exploded because you've found people out of work and they're like, well, I can make some money at this. Mrs. Poindexter has made some money. Her husband, Chris, will sometimes take her photos, mostly doing what he calls normal mom stuff around the house, posing in sexy lingerie. And now she says she makes up to $150,000 a month from no! her subscribers. Then it started just taking off. Crystal says last summer, a group of moms from her ah. kids' Catholic school, Sacred Heart Parish, started a crusade to get her three boys <laughs> under the age of 12 kicked out of school. At one point, sending anonymous envelopes of her photos to the school. All these women are talking about you. It worked. So... Producer Phil, I need a ruling. I'm assuming these are three or four giant house frows who wear moo-moos or have that little hair on the upper lip, cankles. Uh, they're 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 not. They're upset not because she's unchristian. They're upset because she gets all of the people staring at her, and she's making all this money. And we just think it's wrong. It's because you're nasty. That is correct, sir. Thank you, sir. And the ruling is that is correct. It's a do-gooder house, Frau. <laughs> it's ruining everything. These kids got kicked out of school. Guarantee you, amongst the dads. It wasn't a dad doing this. It wasn't some dad going, you know, we should kick this lady out of school and take her kid to her kids go like No, it wasn't a dad. And if it was, it was one of their husbands who's being forced to say it. But in real life, he probably already subscribes. because he's, he's got a burner phone. It's got another credit card she don't know about. Bunch of house frows. Oh, Chad. Do I think that she should be? Hey, look, it's a school. It's a private school. Do what they want. I mean, the Catholics, they're always above board, right? They've never done anything wrong. Never ever in the history of the entire Catholic Church. Never once have they done it. Like, could you imagine the Catholic Church doing something crazy in a Catholic school or anything? Like where something would happen to the kids, and then instead of punishing the person that did it, they just continually move them around for play? That would be insane. Just last night, the Jacksons got an email from the Sacred Heart School principal stating her adult website is in direct conflict with the school's philosophy and they must find another school for her kids immediately. They wanted my kids removed from school and they were successful in the very end. Now some parents are saying these kids shouldn't be punished for their parents' decision. Crystal says she'll continue to post on her OnlyFans and enroll her kids in another school. You're taking these innocent children and you're punishing them 
for something that Fair. you don't agree with. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of. And if you see the picture, all you have to do is type in her name. It's Mrs. Poindexter OnlyFans, and nothing. There's nothing like you're like, oh, it's what? What if she was in a bikini? Well, it's different. Well, how's that different? Because it's different. Well, why? I mean, you, you everybody's looking for some. You know, uh, get over yourself. Stop making it so weird. No, they have every right to do that. You have to think, hey, if we're doing this, there's a chance that mm, this is probably not going to be great for the kids if anybody finds. And of course, that's the funny thing is, of course, they're going to find out. You know how they're going to find out? Because somebody at school saw her on OnlyFans. <laughs> that's how they found out. If nobody was on OnlyFans, chances are nobody would have found out. It's been brought to our attention. How is it brought to your attention? Ah, oh, I'd rather not say. <laughs> sure. Sure. These kids are probably popular. I was arguing with my, uh, do my local show, I was arguing with my on-air partner who's very stiff and square. It's like, ah, what kind of example is that set for the kids? I'm like, a good one. It's capitalism, baby. You rock with what you got. You rock with what you got. If I looked like Ronaldo, I'd be doing my show right now in shorts only. <laughs> if I look like Ronaldo and I was playing soccer, I'm like, eh, just, paint my, just paint the number on my back. <laughs> look at these abs. I don't want anybody not to see these. <laughs> That'd be a crime. My God. So people are so stuffy. It's house frows, though. I'm telling you. Somebody out there, some do-gooder. I just think this is not right. Ah. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. But you know what? If you told them, hey, you lose a hundred pounds, you make two hundred thousand dollars a month, they'd be like, what? If they could, they would. They can't, so they don't. That's what I'm saying. Rough grains. My dog loves rough grains. He is not on OnlyFans. Doodle is not on OnlyFans. He is on the couch, probably. Getting ready to eat. And that's where his life changed. He's got fatty tumors and arthritis. He's much older. We thought he was younger when we adopted him. And I honestly think they were dying him, like his hair. Because, <laughs> like, he got kind of gray fast. But it's amazing what a little thing like this can do. So Rough Greens, it has all of the vitamins, nutrients, you know, probiotics, all of these amazing things inside of it. And it brings his food to life. And what it's done is it's changed everything. He went from having arthritis and, and and fatty tumors to a reduction in those and virtually no joint pain whatsoever. His life is extended because we were seriously considered putting him down because he'd become to the point where even petting him, he would nip at you. We couldn't have that. Not around the kids. And so we said, all right, let's try this. Lo and behold, it's changed everything. Now, Rough Greens wants you to try it too. And they mean try it for free. You pay the shipping and that's it. You go to roughgreens.com slash chad, R-U-F-F greens.com slash chad. You pay for the shipping. They send you the bag. You try it. You tell them, hey, I like it, don't like it. I think your dog's going to be like, let's get some more of this. R-U-F-F greens.com slash chad. Or call it. And it's simple. And I Because everybody messes up. It's R-U-F-F greens.com slash chad. Just go there. It's the best way to do it. And it's Chad, not Benson, just Chad. It's the Chad Benson Show. You stink like fear and white male privilege to me. I do often out myself verbally as a gender. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm proud to be a gender. Are you stupid? <laughs> Ruben! What? Are you kidding me? Not a great way to use your white privilege. Some people get it. Some people don't. You're listening to the Chad Benson Show. This is crazy. Out of Hollywood, California. Ryan Fisher, he's 30 years old. He's a dog walker. And he's been dog walking for a lady by the name of Lady Gaga. 
She's got two dogs, Koji, Miss Asia, and Gustav. And last night while walking the dogs, shot four times by two assailants, and the dogs were dog-napped. Now, these French bulldogs can sell for as high as $10,000 a piece if they got pedigree. She is offering five hundred k for the reward as long as they're safely returned, and she will not ask questions. That's crazy. Would you pay something like that? Not for a dog. I will say, I do. I have lizards. I have two lizards that. Uh, well, I've got a few. I got a few lizards. Not all of them are here. Like some of them, they go out and they breed and stuff like that because you try to. And I and I don't breed for money. I'm not. You know, it's it's. It, I breed some for the conservation of these things. Some to hopefully you know grow some of the species here in America because you you it's tough to get them here. Uh, and someplace they don't allow them to be imported anymore, even though in some places they're a nuisance. They still, but uh, yeah, you can find like lizards, snakes. There's snakes out there that go for tons of money. Lizards, the same thing. Like cars, like that. How much is that? That's that's a college education. It's crazy. But these dogs, dog napping, what? It's crazy. Shot four times. My goodness me, that is insane. His name is Wally Pipp. You guys may have heard of him. Famous saying, you got Wally Pipped. Did it happen in Jeopardy? So they're trying out all of these hosts for Jeopardy. Ken Jennings and a bunch. Some of them are just filling in. It's fun. The Aaron Rodgers kind of thing. He wants to. But a lot of these people are hoping that they're going to be it. Somebody came down ill. In steps Mike Richards, who's done a few things in front of the camera. Good looking dude. But he's the executive producer, and guess what? Everybody's like, this might be the dude. And welcome to Jeopardy. I'm Mike Richards, the executive producer of Jeopardy, and I'm hosting today and for the next two weeks to keep the greatest quiz show in the world going. We have some amazing guest hosts coming that I can't wait for you to see. But with the COVID outbreak here in L.A., folks were understandably a little reticent to shoot. And lo and behold, people are like, this is the dude. Did he Wally Pip everybody? And he's like, I don't know. No, no, no. I watched some of it last night. Yeah, he's got it. Jeopardy fans immediately took a liking to Richards. One viewer tweeted, I hope Jeopardy puts Mike Richards permanently in the host chair. He was excellent. I think Jeopardy can stop looking for Alex Trebek's replacement, adding, Mike Richards is a fuck. So, as the producer, my job is to quite literally live the mantra, the show must go on. And I think he may be the guy, and sometimes that's when you find the best guy. Wally Pipp had a headache because he got hit in the head a few days earlier. In baseball, and the rest is history, because the guy who replaced him long-term was really long-term, Lou Gehrig. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show's your show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Do a little bit of the math. Getting the vaccine and having it available is not the same as putting it in someone's arm. This is going to be a continuous rolling effort. We will have ordered over 600 million doses by the end of July. July 29th is the expected date. That could change. Look what's happening with the weather now, for example. I believe we'll be approaching normalcy by the end of this year. God willing, this Christmas will be different than last. But I can't make that commitment to you. Then uh, what the hell are we doing? Well, we're going to we're going to we're getting these things done. No, no. Why can't you make a commitment? I don't want a commitment like maybe the commitment is we will be. The commitment is this is going to happen. The commitment is not an open ended, asinine thing of, well, I don't know when it's going to happen. Look, as human beings, we're mostly reasonable, right? 
if if they find a new variant of this thing, like no, you guys don't even understand. This is a total new variant, and and, and, and we we all we all get that. We understand. We get it. We get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. But if you give, if we have five hundred million, six hundred million dosages that are out there, and another fifty to a hundred million people that have already tested positive and or were asymptomatic, I'm doing the math, brother. And the math says life gets back to normal. But my math is different than his math. Because my math is based on choice and also having an understanding that, yes, sometimes you have to take some calculated risk as we do each and every single day. You know it. I know it. We all do it. So in saying that, I believe you don't want to give up what's going on. Yeah, you don't. You kind of, you kind of, you're not ready to give it up. It's a lot of power in that. And, and, and more so at the state level. The only reason places like California and New York are even thinking about opening up or reopening up in certain areas again and loosening restrictions is because they're in trouble. Gavin Newsom faces a recall. If he wasn't facing a recall, he wouldn't be opening up the way that he's starting to. If 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 the the grandmother and grandfather killer slash now unwanted kisser allegedly wasn't in some hot water, uh, things may be different. We're going back to normal. This isn't a question of 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 at this point if. And the question isn't when. The question is as soon as possible. And I, th- uh, the answer is July, August, school time, depending on where you are in the country. Mid-August, here we start school. In, in August, some places start in early September. Kids will be back in school. Because if you're telling me now that, because that to me says, yeah, kids may not be in school through the end of through this year. That ain't happening. Ain't happening. Mm. Because if, right, so you heard what he said. Let's go over this again because I think you guys need to hear this. Do a little bit of the math. I'm doing math. Getting the vaccine and having it available is not the same as putting it in someone's arm. This is going to be a continuous rolling effort. We will have ordered over 600 million doses by the end of July. July 29th is the expected date. That could change. Look what's happening with the weather now, for example. I believe we'll be approaching normalcy by the end of this year. God willing, this Christmas will be different than last. But I can't make that commitment to you. Somebody just said, yes, Chad, we'll go back to normal, but COVID is here to say, bro. Well, first of all, bro, I've said that since the beginning of this. We have to learn to do what? Live with it, through it, and around it. It's going to be endemic, not pandemic. I've said that the entire time. We're just going to have to deal with it and continue to follow CDC guidelines. What are CDC guidelines? If CDC guidelines are, hey, movie theaters uh, can only have 25 people, or 25%. Same thing with restaurants. You're going to live your life based on the CDC? But yeah, totally. No, we're not. We're, we're not going to live our life based on bureaucrats and people who take an opportunity to, to, to run with it. It's not what we're about. It's not going to happen. It isn't. We can be wary and cautious while we get this thing under control, but we're also going to understand it's here with us forever, or at least for a while. In, 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 in the way that we see it. Remember, the Spanish flu never really went away. <laughs> There's a form of it still out there. It just, eventually, people have built up some sort of immunity and resistance to the point where it was, nah. The flu's never gone anywhere. But we don't stop down for the flu. And still, with all the mitigating uh, efforts that we try with the flu, still kills fifty to 80,000 people a year. And that's with several vaccines and therapeutics. But if you think that we're going to live our lives where only 
hybrid learning for the next two or three years for kids and a stop and start. It's just it, that's not going to happen. People will not allow that. We can't allow that. We can't. It just It just can't be done. And expect to think that we're going to come out on the other side and have anything left. Except an entire nation dependent on a government where we look like what at that point? Well, go get a vaccine. Okay, I got a vaccine. Okay, now live the same way you've been living the last year. Well, why did I get the vaccine? To have the vaccine. No, but why did I get it? If, if nothing's going to change, why should I do extra steps to get the same result? Just waiting. Things need to change. We get that. I have zero problems with wearing a mask in a store right now. I have zero problems with 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 wearing a mask here at the office. I have zero problems with doing things that people ask me to do because I, I live a very solitary life anyways, <laughs> in a lot of ways. I, I just kind of do my own thing, very close-knit family and friends. Uh, but I'm also very, very much a person that likes my freedoms and liberties, and I'm not willing to give them up. I can respect others, and I think we can all do that, and at times we haven't. But I tell you what we're not going to do. I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm dealing with my talking my kid off the freaking ledge, if you will, like the other night, knowing that he's not going to be able to do anything anymore based on some bureaucrat who's got their head up their ass because they're enjoying the power trip that they're on. In particular, teachers unions, in his case, no, no. If we're going through the effort to get these things and we're going through the effort to to make them available and we're going through the effort to offer them to people and some people may choose not to take them and that is fine, but that is a you thing. That is not a me thing. And if something happens to you, you've taken the calculated risk. Nobody's getting out alive. In life. I think we all realize that. But calculated risk are what makes life worth living. And every day we take them. You walk down the steps, there's a calculated risk. Well, that's not, that's not, really. How many people die at home? Falls, ladders, kitchen, bathtubs, all calculated risk. But they're worth taking because, you know, you don't want to stink. You need to get downstairs. You got to go to the refrigerator. It's the way life is. But the, uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. Well, part of that is because you haven't told people when the date is that we're going to start getting back to normal. When you can tell all the governors, look, now it's up to you guys, but I'm telling everybody else, live their life. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Imagine if you're on this plane. The report came in from the pilots of American Airlines Flight 2292 heading to Phoenix, flying at altitude, calling in that something had just missed them. Have any targets up here? We just had something go right over the top of us. The audio from Live ATC, the pilots describing what they saw. I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing. But radar didn't show anything in the area. It's now an unidentified flying object the FBI is investigating. Where are you guys going? <laughs> Is it fun there? Let me go over this again. A UFO does not mean little green men. A UFO is something we can't identify. It was in an area where they've had some famous sightings in that area of New Mexico, but also in an area where we have some stuff in and around Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona area, deserty, secluded, hard to get to. There's been areas close by as well where stuff potentially has been spotted on numerous occasions and there's rumors to be stuff, but also where there's a very good chance that we have programs that go on that, how should we say this, help us in the world to flex our muscles. So it doesn't mean little green men. Doesn't mean it wasn't little green men. They could be, what if they're purple and tall? What if they're not men or women? What if they're just blobs? Just a head floating around, see through with the brain and a few little like stemmy arms like a jellyfish. What if that's what they are? 
I don't know. What if they're from another dimension? But the fact that Radar didn't pick it up, it's kind of cool. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text us. We'll give you an update on Tiger coming up. What's going on with him? What's the next steps, no pun intended, uh, for him and his career? Is it over? Does he, you know, does he have the drive? That's a very good question. You know, you know, a lot of this is going to depend not just on, you know, the 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 injuries, but the the mental side of it, and also the passion. We'll talk about that first. Car Shield twenty four seven roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. Shop is the shop that you choose, and they get them paid directly. The thing I love about Car Shield that's just amazing is is the fact that. It's a call. Right? Hey, my car, something's gone wrong with it. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we're going to come pick you up. We're going to take you to where you need to go. It, it's little things like that where you're like, you're like, that's pretty cool, right? So we're doing that. You're, you're picking up my car, and, and thanks so much for that. Yeah, and by the way, we're going to get you a rental car. Oh, wow. Where do you want us to take it? I mean, I get a pick? Yeah, I take it to my, my favorite dealership down the street. It worked on my family car for years. There's a dealership. Whatever it is. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's the beauty of Car Shield. Plans start as low as $99 a month, whether your car is newer or older. They don't care. they got a plan that's right for you. And they've been great. Like, I I had an issue with my electronics in my car because I have a warranty for my engine, but I didn't have one for my car electronics because it's a newer car. you got to take out the entire dashboard. And they took care of everything. Call CarShield today. Find out how you can get protected. America's number one auto protection company. 800-665-2157, 800-665-2157. 800-665-2157, 800-665-2157. Use code Benson to save 10% or carshield.com, carshield.com. Use code Benson to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. I don't think he was aware of how gravely he was injured at the time. Um, It could be a a mixture of adrenaline. Um, It could have been shock. This accident was, I would say, traumatic. There was a a lot of energy, obviously, that went into um, the speeds that made the vehicle travel the distance that it did, um, the fact that it rolled. I've seen uh, collisions that didn't look as serious um, where the occupants were injured much more severely. Yeah, Tiger, that right there, L.A. County deputy who first found Tiger, Carlos Gonzalez. They're not charging him with anything. Uh, Speed is what they're saying probably was a factor. doesn't seem to be anything uh, other than, than that. Was there more to it? And not talking about drugs, was he pissed? Was he angry? Uh, people reporting stuff? The L.A. County Sheriff says Woods had no recollection of the wreck when he was questioned at the hospital. And before the crash, TMZ reports Woods seemed agitated and impatient at the parking lot of his hotel. A witness telling TMZ Woods' SUV was blocked by another car unloading luggage. The witness added, once the delay was over, Woods took off fast. Investigators say Woods was not under the influence. Now, comes the other part of this. Looks like he's obviously going to live. Now what? Now what? Does he want it? That's a question right there. Like, for all of the other questions about, like, will he be able to walk again? Will he be able, I, I think we're, we're going to find out that, yeah, he is. He's, got the, he's, that, he's that kind of person. The other side of it comes now is, is does he want it? Because, you know, to get back like that, the one advantage he has, say, to other players like Alex Smith we touched on yesterday, the, the Washington football team uh, quarterback. Is that football team? Football, football club? I don't know what they're called. They're, his road back, like a lot of other people in, in, in team sports, is far lonelier. He's worse. He's he's used to this. He, he he being alone is fine. That's golf is an alone thing. Like you take that shot, you take it on your own. Nobody else take that shot for you. This isn't a team competition. So those kind of things uh, that for a lot of players, you know, I know when I was injured, man, that road back sucks. Man, you're in a you're in a room by yourself. You're working out. You're not going to meetings. You're not training with the guys. You're not traveling with the guys. 
uh, you're you're out of sight, out of mind. Things are happening. You're not a part of it, and and that's that's golf. Golf's the, you, they're kind of they're they're like cats. They're all kind of doing their own deal. So that's one advantage he has. But it's about the passion now for Tiger. Does he have the passion? To get back. And we're going to discuss that because there's a difference between the physical side. Can you get back to it? To recover from any injury, especially something this devastating. And at the age that he at is at, there is something else that goes into this. And it is a it's a passion thing. And we'll discuss it because of all of the things he's been through. Does he want another, you know, bite at the apple? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us. More on Johnson and Johnson. And they declassified Khashoggi. Yes, the, yes, you guys know. Yes, yes, Khashoggi, the guy that was murdered. You're never going to believe Oh, you are going to believe it? Yeah. Is it what everybody said? Oh, it is. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. You know, before we so rudely interrupt it, talking about Tiger Woods, I just say some, you know, uh, and I was talking about passion, and I said I wanted to touch on this because passion's huge. Not everybody who plays professional sports loves the sports they play. They don't. In fact, uh, Brooks Kepka is one of the best golfers in the world. He's pretty adamant. He's not a fan of golf. Don't watch it. Outside of practicing and playing i don't play it some of the guys do they live for it they love every second of it there's different reasons for that there's a there's a there's there's a ton of reasons some it's because you know they're just there's a drive and it would be that way for anything that they do for others it is their passion everything about it like is that they, they don't have a passion for anything else and they wouldn't have a passion for anything else. It's a love of the game. They watch it. They watch every second of it. If they're not practicing, they're watching it. And if they're not watching it, they're playing. It, Tiger is, you know, his entire life was scripted. It was scripted in a much different way. It was scripted in a public way. And now this thing's going to go one of two ways. This energizes him in a weird way. This energizes him in, in, in a way that he goes, I, I, now that there's a true chance that this thing's going to be taken away from me, and, and, and it wasn't on my terms. That's also something big. One on my terms. I didn't walk away from the sport and say, I've done everything I could. I've left it all out here. There's nothing else I can do. No, no, no. Well, not my terms. It was on this situation. And and a lot of that's already happened with Tiger. I mean, you know, he was at the end anyways. His body's been through hell and then some. But after all he's been through with his father, obviously the crafted story of his life that really ended up being something completely different, you, you you do, you know, you wonder, do you have the passion for the game? Do you have the love of the game? And sometimes it's the, you you rekindle that love. Like I said, Brooks Kepska is one of the guys that's the best in the world, and he's been very surly at times about, eh, I don't really watch the game, I don't care. But over the last year, he's had to have knee surgery, he's had to have hip surgery. There was a thought he may not play for a good long while, and he said, you know, I kind of fell, fell back in love. I, I missed it. And sometimes you need that. But will this be the greatest comeback 
of his career, something that defines him. And is and, and is that going to be enough? Because even if he has the passion, even if he has the want, is there going to be a physical side of him that will that that he was already struggling with? Five micro dis, disectomies that they've done, back fusion surgeries, Achilles tendon tears, several knee surgeries for torn ACLs, and numerous other back injuries, rotator cuff. All of, we could just walk down the line. Physically, the sport had passed him by. A guy that defined the sport, became bigger than the sport, it passed him by. All these guys hit the ball farther. All of those things. And sometimes, even if you can make that comeback for somebody like him, like Alex Smith, the quarterback, that was a comeback of, for him of, I think a lot of it had to do with faith and a bunch of other things to come back after that horrific injury where they thought they were going to have, they thought he was going to die potentially. And then they thought they were going to have to amputate his leg to playing in the NFL again about 18 months, months after that happened was, wow. But for Tiger, Alex Smith was never the greatest. Tiger was. Alex Smith was never the Tom Brady. Tiger was Tom Brady and Michael Jordan. And just coming back only to kind of suck. There's a lot to that. Even though you may have the passion for it, you also don't want to be Babe Ruth, right? Where they pull you out of a game because you, you every time you swing, you fall down. You don't want to you don't want everybody's lasting thing in modern times to be about you sucking the things he had to deal with to get to that point to to win augusta in 2019 um yeah i look i I don't want to take anything away from what ben hogan did after after his car crash or any of the other comebacks that athletes have had in other sports but um right now i can't think of of any greater comeback in sports than the the one that you know the journey that he made from that lunch we had in 2017 to to winning the Masters a couple of years later. Yeah. And that's Roy McIlroy. One of the greatest. And now comes that real question. And I and I and, it, and I think it's like that for all of us cuz we've all been in that situation in life. You know, where you, where you're sitting there and you you realizing you may have to get something up, that something that was maybe a hobby that you th- thought was going to become a career, or or a career that just it it doesn't jive, and you and you're having to make a decision, and are you getting pushed? It could be a relationship. What a, we've all been there in, in that situation, and is is this it? Like, do you do you have it in you? That's the other thing, man. Because sometimes you come back and you come back and you come back, and the question is, do you have another one in you? Oh, I don't know. And a lot of that has to do with not just the want and the desire to come back as far as like, yeah, I could do this. But do you have the passion for the game? Do you have the love of the game? Because that's what keeps you going, man. When you're in that gym at, you know, six in the morning and it's you and some assistant physical therapist and you're you're doing stuff. It's like, dude, do you really love this thing this much? That's when you're tested. 323-538-2423. At Chad Manson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Oh, they're going to release it. Yes. So you guys remember the Khashoggi thing, right? You guys remember that, right? The MBS, Saudis, Khashoggi. Eh, they just, it was awful. And then, of course, the, the whole battle of, you know, why didn't Trump do anything to the Saudis? Here's a guy who was staying here in America, a guy who's, you know, his kids are American. It's like, oh, here's a, he was a journalist. This is about free. Why aren't you protecting this? Just, the Saudis were involved. And, of course, Trump and them played it kind of loose and stuff because cause you have to. <laughs> hate to tell everybody this. It's awful what they did. And if you watch the documentary that's out right now, you will find out how awful. As bad as it sounds, as they describe it, some of the stuff on the news, when you find out really what they did to this guy, a journalist who was arguably the most influential person throughout the Arab world that wasn't a king or a general, who who the Saudis, the, cr- the crowns, the, all of the people in the crown, all of the royal family wanted him dead. And they got their wish. Well, they're going to declassify so we can see everything. 
A declassified version of a U.S. intelligence report on the 2018 murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi is expected to soon be released publicly. And there are reports that it will say Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki on Wednesday said President Biden's upcoming call with Saudi's King Salman is part of an effort to recalibrate engagement with Saudi Arabia, signaling a shift from the very close ties the Trump administration had with Riyadh. We have a uh, long relationship with Saudi Arabia. They are being attacked in the region, and uh, that is certainly an area where we continue to work with them on. Yeah, but this thing pretty much basically says not only did he sanction the hell out of him, he's like, hey, take my plane. <laughs> we'll, we'll set up some fake business. We'll do all kinds of stuff. He's going to go to apply for a marriage license. Turkey. Next thing you know, bing, bang, boom, no closed circuit TV. And what they do see from some of the 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 TV angles, if you will, around is him go out, but bags come out. It's the devil you do, right? The, the closeness or the relationship you have is the same kind of uneasy relationship right now that Israel and Saudi Arabia have, which is we all hate Iran and they all hate us. And they're the biggest issue here in this region so the enemy of my enemy right now will be my uneasy friend you may be my enemy later but right now there may not be later unless we sort things out and we watch it we walk that we walk that fine line and if you're biden you walk a fine line in a situation like this because you're trying to be greener they're still Saudi Arabia. They're trying to move away from oil and gas. They're trying to move away from fossil fuels. They're taking all that money and they're investing it in new technology and doing a bunch of other things. While all that is happening, though, they're still Saudi Arabia. They still control a ton of the world's oil. So you're trying to walk a fine line of we're trying to go green, but we also want to piss you off. It's just this is the 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 tangled web of geopolitics globally. This guy was murdered. And unfortunately, we kind of had to say, eh. and it sounds horrible. Kind of what we do, right? It's kind of, that's, that's, for a lack of a better term, as awful as it sounds, it's, for us, it's, that's awful. We can get out there, but it's, it was business to them. And we have business with them. If you've ever seen the movie Lord of War, Another phenomenal. Nicolas Cage is just freaking brilliant. Uh, but it's a great, great movie. But at the end of the movie, um, spoiler alert, it's been out for a while, so if you didn't, he gets arrested. And this guy's been chasing him, Ethan Hawke, this entire time. Because this guy's just a, just a he's, he's, he's an arms dealer. He's been chasing him all over. Finally thinks he has him. Says, you're going to go to jail. You're going to die in court because you're going to be going from courtroom to courtroom. And he just smiles and he laughs at him. He says, no, I'm not. He says, yeah, I am. He says, no, I'm not. And he goes, can I see the paper? And they have a newspaper in there. And he sees there's a thing about stuff going on in Africa. And he says, no, I'm not going to die. He goes, because there are some things that our president can't do that I can. And because of that, and the enemy is my enemy, is my friend. I can help people out. It's kind of what happened here. And it's horrible to think that because of what took place. But we're doing business in China right now. And they got three million Uyghurs locked up in a camp. And they're sterilizing women. And they're raping women. And they're killing men. And they're doing business. The NBA, Apple, everybody in between, including us. 323-538-2423 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I guess Stalin was right. The death of one is a tragedy. The death of and torture of millions is, is just a statistic. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Twitter, tweet, text, AMAC, Association Mature American Citizen, fastest growing over 50 organization in the country. So what does that mean? Let's just say for the for the sake of argument, you you you're you're over fifty, but you're not ready for Social Security and Medicare, but you do need health insurance. They'll help you with that. 
let's just say you are over 50 and 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 you're getting towards that age where you're thinking I should take Medicare I should take Social Security I'm gonna need help with this you call them up they help you on top of that they're out there advocating for things like common sense immigration reform protecting things like our first and second amendment and many other things now is a great time to join that's what I want you to do with all of those things you're like wow those are great Think about all the benefits, retail, restaurant, hotel, travel discounts, discounts on everything and then some from movies to amusement park and everything in between on top of all of that stuff. And it's only $16 a year. AMAC.us forward slash chat. AMAC.us forward slash chat. Join now. AMAC.us forward slash chat. It's the Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. Lady Gaga's reps confirm the dog stolen in a robbery and shooting last night are hers. A shooting happening in Hollywood. At least one robber going up to Lady Gaga's dog walker, and the dog walker was shot. Lady Gaga is now offering a reward of half a million dollars, no questions asked, for the safe return of her dogs. Police tell us French bulldogs have been targets of robberies recently. They're in high demand right now. It's unknown if the gunman knew the dogs belonged to Lady Gaga. I would assume... Right, you, would, you don't know, right? Like You just think maybe they just were, were doing it. Maybe? I don't... What I do know is... Wow. 500K. Some of those dogs go for 10K. Isn't it weird? Like, people finance those things. So like, you could finance. I'm a dog? I could finance a dog? <laughs> or I could go rescue one. That's why I work with my friends over at Wounded Paw. Uh, and and I could do that. that. That's something I could do. I've never wanted, like, but I'm weird because I do have animals that are, are extremely expensive and some are extremely rare. And they're, and they're expensive, but I just, I could never finance one. I just find that to be so weird. Hold on. Uh, uh, oh, my credit's good. My credit's going to be ruined because <laughs> my dog payment didn't go through. <laughs> she didn't finance it. I'm sure she paid because she won't pay 500000 those guys return it. <laughs> At that point, I think it's job well done. <laughs> it's not very nice. Four times they shot the guy. I don't know. I still haven't heard if he's alive or not. So, but I w- when you you have to know that that person has three dogs. Whoever that person is is probably got some money. What if you had a buyer for it? Now you're like, oh, man, we sold those dogs for like $15,000. We need to get them back because they're going off. <laughs> and that guy's like, hey, I got your dogs. Bought them from these guys. Scumbags. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. The question of when. When will it happen? Can it happen? When can we remove them? Because of the history with other vaccines and viruses, it's believed you won't pass it along to someone else once you've gotten the COVID shot. But ABC News Medical Unit Supervising Producer Sony Salzman says, Because it hasn't been definitively proven yet for this disease, our public health officials, including the CDC, are saying keep that mask on. Which Brown University's Dr. Ashish Jha says can be a conflicting message. His timeline for hanging out with friends and family, maybe without a mask, April, May, June. And at that point, I think we can really start making some decisions about relaxing a lot of these restrictions. Yeah. Let's do it. Again, you heard there. Well, we really don't know. We want a definitive proof. And we've talked to these people who are bureaucrats who used to be scientists and some of them used to be doctors, but now most of them are politicians. And then there's also a lot of other politicians. So, you know, keep the mask on. And I've got no problem keeping the mask on for a little bit. Respecting my friends, my family, people I do and don't know. 
I have zero problems uh, about that. But once we get to the point where we see even a greater fall in numbers and we know that a majority, not a minority of people of of uh, have been vaccinated that could be and that there's another large group out there that have had it, then at that point in time, yeah, mask come off. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. Oh, I smell it. That's Friday, kids. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.